Hi, I'm Simon. <laughs> so um, I'm going to talk mainly about, about innovation, how you might uh, approach a, a brief that actually has a, a, a communication goal in it. We're thinking of approaching it in an experiential, innovation-based way. But first of all, a brief intro to Analog Folk. So you're in it, welcome. Um, we've been around since 2008. I've been here almost two years now. Uh, we are international. We've got uh, this, our London office, which is our, our home office, our biggest office but also New York and Sydney. Uh, we're completely leading in number of dogs at the moment. New York, very, very behind. We work for a load of very, very interesting clients. But the, the three things I really want to tell you about Analog Folk are our, our three main principles that we stick to. So, first of all, these is we use digital to make the analog world better. So that is about us really being a digital agency, but not just being about tech for tech's sake. It's all about remembering that people are analogue, people are flesh and blood and emotional, and it's about experiences that, that, that reach them. Secondly, we make and market interactive experiences. So that might seem quite a, a mundane statement, but the key word there is market. Sometimes making the thing, making a device, or making a, a website, a piece of software, whatever it is that you're creating, isn't enough. That marketing it, telling people that, about that thing, becomes the story, becomes the, the relevant thing. And thirdly, our work creates value. So it's for people and brands. So all agencies create value for, for the brand, or if they're, if they're any good, create value for the brands they're working with. That, that you know, you're, They are paying you to do a job. It's generally a communication job. For us, it's really, really important that the people we're speaking to, our audience or our users, are also getting something out of it. And that's a theme that hopefully you'll see in some of the work I'm about to show you. So, innovation. Now, what do we actually mean by, uh, by innovation? Or how would a client or a brand talk about innovation? Well, normally, you talk about communication. You talk about uh, what you want to say as a brand, what, as you want to say as a client, that you've got a new product to announce, that you want to communicate something about yourself, like trust, for example. That you, It's really about what you want to say. But before that, can you tell me what's going on here? They want that? Indeed. So there's Katy Perry in the halftime show of the Super Bowl. Uh, Super Bowl, the main draw, arguably, is this, this massive game of football. I think the Patriots triumph over the, the Seattle Seahawks on, on Sunday night. But a lot of people tune in just for the halftime show. But there's another big, big thing happening on Super Bowl. The, the third thing, the third piece of entertainment. And that is the ads. Now, the ads at the Super Bowl are, are generally amazing. And they're the time in the, the, the marketing calendar where, in America, people really look forward to the ads. People think, oh, I wonder what the ads are going to be like this year. That they, they try and stay in the room for those, for those breaks in the, in the game because they want to see the ads. So I'll very quickly show you my, my favourite ad from, from the Super Bowl this year. To all the people who are ordering food right now by calling a restaurant over the phone, we urge you to put down that phone. No, no. Because... We don't have the steak treats. <laughs> Grubhub lets you order online for free from local restaurants without ever having to talk to another human being. Grubhub. Click. Click. Food. So, I think that's lovely, uh, very entertaining. So great, Super Bowl, brilliant, everyone looks forward to the ads, some good stuff. Problem is, in the main, people don't look forward to ads. Ads are things, well, that people often pay to avoid, whether it's the premium version of an app that doesn't have the ads in, or services like Netflix, where you can choose to not to ever see TV ads. So, so this is the reason why, why brands and clients engage with agencies such as us to create something else. So that might be uh, content or a service, a product or an experience. And the shorthand for that really is it's something people actually want in their lives. So that's generally where innovation comes in when we're talking about brands. If they're not talking about improving their actual service, then if we're thinking about the communication goal of, of the, the thing they're asking us to do, it's about creating something that people actually want, to so choose to have rather than something they want to avoid. So I'm going to show you three uh, very different case studies now. These are all uh, case studies, these are all pieces of work that have been recognised by DNAD. The first two 
uh, last year, and then the third one is a little bit older. Hello, and welcome to the Photon Shower, brought to you by Delta. You have selected jet lag therapy. Calculating your plan now. Let's begin. Based on your travel data, you crossed six time zones. You traveled west. To adjust to your new time zone, your body clock must be delayed by six hours. Relax. Breathe deeply. Allow your lungs to fill and empty completely. You should feel calm and peaceful. Concentrate on your breathing. Focus on the moving lights surrounding you. That's by an agency uh, called Nexus, I believe. Now, ex extraordinary thing. So there is this, there's this theory about pulses of light readjusting your body clock. And it's generally been thought of as a quite sort of a hokey thing. Not, people aren't sure whether they believe it or not. But uh, Delta Airlines really seized on it and thought, well, let's turn it into something which is, is extraordinary. So rather than just take this, this kind of theory and giving people uh, this, these, these pulse of light in a simple way, they create that installation that where design has lifted it into something really, really magical. So it, so it feels like you're stepping into the future. It almost feels like you're going to be teleported to your destination. So it's a, it's a really extraordinary coming together of, of a, you know, an innovation idea, a kind of sort of fringes innovation idea, and some beautiful design to make an experience that people are going to talk about. So that, that one's one of mine, that was from my, my last agency, uh, and that was really about creating the ultimate driving soundtrack, right? So we worked with Underworld and worked with um, some, some, some incredible uh, developers to put together an app which 
responded to exactly the way you're driving. And it was to do with this sort of fantasy that you have where, where the moment where you're driving and the music seems to absolutely sync with the road you're on. And what did people to experience that every time they drove. So, uh, in really, really interesting music app that sits on your dashboard, although we weren't commercially allowed to release because of Oxfam we were concerned it would make people drive like maniacs. Uh, but a, uh, a really interesting piece of technology that combined music and driving, but the, the message it was giving out, of course, was, was Volkswagen were, were very, very high tech and they were very, very focused, particularly with the GTI, on the exhilarating driving experience. So that was the sort of communication that, that came off that, even though it wasn't you know, explicit as in an ad, it wasn't a big message saying those things, but that's what the story that emerged from that was. So the, the, the third case study film I'm going to show you is... Uh, it looks like it was filmed in the early 90s. It's much more recent than that, but uh, yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll see what I mean. Best Buy has always been the undisputed tech expert, but their key asset, the knowledge of the Blue Shirts and Geek Squad agents, was confined to their stores. So if people never came in, how would they ever know what they were missing? So Best Buy decided to launch a tool that could extend the knowledge of their geeks and Blue Shirts beyond their walls and out into the digital space. Meet the Twelp Force, a modern, digitized volunteer army of Best Buy employees available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, on Twitter. And not to push products or increase sales, but to provide Twelp, a fancy new term for expert technical help in tweet form. If you have a question, simply tweet at Twelp Force and get an answer, fast. In fact, for every question tweeted, over 2,000 blue shirts are racing to give the fastest and bestest answer. And you got answers from real Best Buy employees, not from some call center an ocean away. And no questions are out of bounds. No questions are too ridiculous. No questions are ignored. Plus, the collective power of Twelve Force is always watching for tech issue tweets and can quickly lend a hand, even without anyone asking. Since the launch, Twelve Force has answered thousands and thousands of tweets and is building momentum for Best Buy as a brand that not only knows tech, but lives it as well. So, so with some Twelve Force for Best Buy, I mean, Hillary said in her intro that, that the social network is not the idea. Well, it, there, it kind of was. This might, this might be in the exception. It's 2010 and maybe they did it at an early enough time. But the thing there, they innovated there, but they didn't build anything new. They sort of looked at their, their internal staff, that they had these amazing IT experts, that people went going there, had a really, really good experience. So we've got all these people that, are, that love answering IT queries, and we've got this platform, Twitter, and it was just putting those two existing things together. So sometimes innovation can be the combining of existing elements rather than, than building something fanciful and new. So I'm going to end with... with uh, five sort of general points that may or may not help you as you sort of tackle this, this nationwide brief. First of all, look for the unmet need or desire. Is there something that uh, out there that, that customers or the, the audience that you're speaking to that want to do, that desire to do but, but can't at the moment, just like with the, the Delta thing, like jet lag is a problem for, for travellers and that's something, we can't solve jet lag, can you? Well, they, they found a way of maybe doing that. The second point, and I think this one's really, really important, is make it magical. You can end up sometimes creating quite a utilitarian experience. Now, if that experience is, is a really super, super useful utility, then that's great. But if you want it to, if you want to increase the chance of, of that, of the thing you've done, of the story you're telling, sort of reaching out to people, then make it a magical thing. So once again, the Delta experience, it wasn't just simply standing next to people with a little a little torch-like device giving them pulses of light to help alleviate their jet lag. It was this incredible design booth that it was a real, real experience going in that felt like stepping into the future. The third one, what can you combine into something new? So like the 12 Force piece, the Best Buy piece, are there existing services and platforms, uh, technologies out there that you can just use in a new way, that you combine in a way that no one has ever combined before? Fourth one, remember people are analogue. So one of the, one of the analog folk principles, of course, uh, using digital to make the analog world better, it's just don't get caught up in using technology for technology's sake. Think about the effect it's actually having on real people. 
And finally, what story does it tell? So yes, it may well be a, a useful service that you're creating or a, a, an interesting thing in its own right, but if, if it's a, an innovation, if it's an experience that you're, you're thinking of creating that only a few people can enjoy, so for example, if you created something in a branch for, for Nationwide, only a few people are only ever going to see that. But is it interesting enough? Does it have that magic to it that it tells this wider story that the people that do experience it share that story and the press writes about it? So the story that an experience tells or a piece of innovation tells can be as important. That's me. Thank you very much.